I thought it would be nice to make a beginner's introduction guide to some of the different Tesla charging adapters, public charging stations, superchargers, dual chargers, so on and so forth. So I guess we'll start from the very basics here, and uh, don't mind the noise in the background. That's just my very loud Gino eating a lollipop. For most people, you will be using this, the Tesla UMC. Uh, consists of the Tesla charging wand with a button to pop the charge door. And you'll notice this end has just got a bare, odd kind of plug. The nice thing about the Tesla setup is there are multiple different adapters available for multiple different plug styles. And I am going to show you the absolute most common. Um, literally, I have never needed anything other than what I have here. And in fact, I didn't even need all the ones I have here. Now, for the most part, your most common one is going to be the NEMA 14-50. This one plugs into a RV 50 amp outlet, which is what most people are going to have installed at their homes. Oops, helps if I put it on the right direction. Snaps in there. Basically, all you do is, just like any other plug you might have, you plug it in. Plug the other end, the wand, into your car, and charging will start. Uh, now, 50 amp outlet, you can charge at up to 40 amps, because you're only allowed to draw fours. Every time I do a video, the phone rings. Ironically, it was somebody telling me I should do my next video in a British accent. I cannot do a British accent, at least not one that you would not laugh at. Anyways, uh, this is what I use. For 99.999% .999 of all my charging, that's more than enough. The 1450 on a 240 volt connection will generally charge your car from completely dead, so zero rated range, to full. 100% in about 6 to 8 hours, depending on if you have the 60 kilowatt or 85 kilowatt battery pack. That is what I use the most often. Now, if you're going to be using public charging stations, almost all of those consist of the J1772 standard, which is this little plug right here. Now, this plug does not even need the Tesla Universal Mobile Connector, all you do is insert the J1772 cord that we will find on the charging station into the adapter, then plug said adapter with the cord into your car. Charging will commence. Uh, now this adapter can provide charging speeds uh, or charging power of up to 80 amps on supported J1772 charging stations. Almost every one I've ever run into in the, out in the wild has been a 30 amp station since the Tesla Model S is the first car and in, at least in North America pretty much the only car that can charge at speeds great, at that, let alone greater than that. If your car is equipped with a dual charger you can use this adapter on a supported station to charge it up to 80 amps. Uh, the fastest station I have ever found out in the public, AC powered station I should say, um, was 70 amps and that was on a uh, Canadian Sun Country Highway uh, charging station in Niagara Falls. And I did not yet have dual chargers installed on my car. Uh, some of our, my longtime followers will know all about that little fiasco that happened on the Niagara trip, uh, but that we, we don't talk about that anymore. So. Right now, these are your two indispensable. Now, the car also uh, the car comes with the 1450 and the J1772. The car also comes with a 120 volt 15 amp adapter. That is your lifeline adapter. That one's the oh crap adapter, or in other words. Uh, yeah, I didn't plan this out too well. I'm stuck in the middle of nowhere, and I just got to find anything, no matter what, to plug it in charge. That is your ticket to getting a charge anywhere and everywhere in North America. 
uh, indispensable. Uh, but there is another one that can be just as handy as this. Prep my personal favorite for emergencies is the NEMA, I think what was this, six, get the, uh, it's not, here it is, I keep getting this wrong, 520. Now, it's also a hundred, technically a 120 volt adapter, only this is a 20 amp adapter, which allows you to charge at 16 amps. This is the 15 amp adapter, it allows you to charge at 12 amps might not sound like that big of a difference but when you're stuck somewhere charging at on 120 volts that extra couple amps can mean the difference uh, uh, quite literally days if you're stuck in the middle of nowhere because from flat dead and this you're looking at about 65 to 70 hours for a full charge now obviously if you can you get enough charge to get you to a higher powered 220 volt station, but not always an option. So the 520 adapter allows you to charge at about 30% quicker. It makes a difference. Especially when it's the middle of winter and you're stuck without a charge and you have kids with you. It does make a difference. This one is the I believe it's just called the TT30. I've actually never used this one. Somebody else gave this to me when they sold their Model S. Uh, I've never used it, but since I have it, I keep it in my little charging pouch. Uh, this is a 30 amp adapter. And this one is rated, oh, this one's 240 volt. So that one will let you charge at, Gino, get out of here. That one will let you charge at 24 amps on a 240 volt connection, and um, I think so, I think that's also commonly found as a 120 volt plug at uh, RV parks. I could be wrong in that. Don't don't take my word for the, the that one there. Um, like I said, I've never used it, never needed it. For the most part, this is your number one plug. That's for charging out in public, and this is your oh shit plug. These three, with these three, that's almost every charging situation you could ever need. And now, as you can see, I have this other weird little adapter here. What this adapter will do is it will take the 20 amp plug and convert it into the 15 amp style plug. Now, one reason you might want to do that is uh, you could carry one less adapter. However, the adapters tell the car what you're plugged into, so you can't draw more power than what the outlet was designed for. So you have to be very careful if you start making or using third-party stuff and adapters. You have to dial the car down before you plug in. And another reason the 20 amp plug is um, probably one of your best ones for, for traveling is now, personally, I made an adapter that converts, because this is 120 volts, I converted this into a 240 volt. So I got a little adapter, uh, which is actually currently up north, because I was using it on my welder. And um, that will allow you to plug this into 240 volt 20 amp outlet. Where might you find a 240 volt 20 amp outlet? Think air conditioners. Most hotels have... 20 amp, 240 volt air conditioners, heat and air conditioner units right inside the door in the hotel room. So if it's an emergency and you need a little more more power, you'd now be charging it up to 16 amps at 240 volts compared to 16 amps at 120 volts. What does doubling the voltage do? Decreases your charge time by half. So you, instead of charging in, say, 60 hours, you're going to charge in 30 hours. Get my drift? And since the outlet would still be rated at 200 and, or excuse me, at 20 amps at uh, 240 volts, 20 amps at 240, uh, it's perfectly safe to do that. Although, please use your discretion. I, I hold 
I assume no responsibility if you burn down a hotel. And of course, always get permission before plugging into somebody else's outlets. Uh, that pretty much covers your basics. Um, I'll cover uh, a UMC dual charging, and uh, we're also going to stop at a supercharger and a Chademo station. Uh, now, unfortunately, the Chademo adapter as of this video is not available in the North American. European or a uh, or most Asian markets um, as far as I know it's only available in Japan and there's still quite a number of bugs with that one but I will still show you those stations this is what would be your most common charging station this is where you would use the J1772 adapter now first what you want to do uh, this is from a charge this is called charge point you're going to have to get yourself a charge point RFID card. Uh, you don't have to have one of these, but uh, you should sign up for their free account. It lets you use all their free stations. You can also choose to use some of their paid stations. Uh, you can also unlock the stations using your smartphone and the charge point app. Very good app to get. But scan your card. It uses a cellular modem to authorize your account. Got this J1772 cord, plug in your adapter, and then just plug in your car. Lights green, car is charging. And it will continue to charge until your car is either full or reaches its uh, predis predetermined uh, charge cutoff point, selectable on your touch screen or uh, until you either stop the uh, charge by waving your card in front of the screen again, unplugging your car, or stopping it from your smartphone app. To stop, so we'll just disconnect, remove your adapter. Now, if, uh, if you're not gonna be with the vehicle, lock your car doors, and that will also lock the adapter to the car so that it cannot be stolen. So then, return the cord back to the base, wind it back up. Now it can be a little more difficult in these northern states or colder countries. Uh, add things like rope during the summer, during the winter time, uh, they don't like to flex. That's some heavy duty wiring in there. Uh, most common, like I said, this is your most common. Um, a lot of these uh, only support a single vehicle charging on the, the high power, but even if somebody else is charging, this is where your 15 or 20 amp 120 volt adapter can come in very handy. If this thing would ever authorize. Most of these have a 20 slash 15 amp 120 volt plug so you can still plug in and start getting a charge even if somebody else is charging gets you a little bit of a head start or at the very least you can still run your air conditioner or heat during the summer or winter time without draining your pack any further comes in handy next stop public charging now there's other kind of public charging as well, such as other manufacturers, cart and car dealerships. Now, it's always a good idea if you're visiting another manufacturer's car dealership that has a public charging spot to ask permission. Uh, you should find most of them very inviting. Right now we are at Rosen Nissan in, uh, I believe this is Greenfield, Wisconsin. It could be Greendale, I'm not sure, right on borderline. And um, they actually have two J1772 stations. Uh, since dealerships with all different manufacturers you can find pretty much everywhere in every city, uh, they can be a very good resource when it comes to charging in a pinch. you have for charging is a Tesla supercharger as you can see behind me I currently have my 60 kilowatt Model S plugged in 
speeds currently with the modern technology that Tesla is currently installing are up to 135 kilowatt hours if you are charging an 85 kilowatt hour battery pack or 105 if you're charging the 60 kilowatt battery pack. These stations are free to use for Tesla owners and they're supposed to be free forever for life. The superchargers work pretty much the same as your UMC or HPWC charger whereas you just remove the wand from the station and plug her in just as you would any other Model S. The Tesla supercharger is easy as plug her in and when you're done I think I've been here all of 15 minutes I came in with zero I'm leaving now with 103 rated miles hit the button pull close and replace can't be as any easier than that. Here we have what is called a Chademo quick charging DC station. Uh, these are quite a bit more populous than the Tesla Model S or Tesla superchargers in general. However, uh, these are usable by quite a bit more cars than the Tesla alone, such as your Nissan Leafs and Mitsubishi Eyes. They use a different protocol and not currently compatible with the Tesla. However, that should change shortly as Tesla is working on an adapter. Uh, you usually find these in uh, a few more places, inner cities, than you would uh, a supercharger. They don't charge quite as fast as superchargers. Uh, this one here is only 50 kilowatt, whereas uh, the current superchargers go up to about 135 with 150 kilowatt superchargers rumored to be in, in the process. a different style plug, quite a bit larger, quite a bit more bulky. And will re eventually require the reuse of a large bulky adapter in addition to be able to charge with the Model S. And of course you always have your high powered wall chargers as you can see right here. Now once again due to the awesomeness of Tesla your high powered wall charger, your supercharger, and your UMC all pretty much work exactly the same. Grab the wand, press the button, charge port opens, you plug in. Now, high powered wall chargers can be a little different as well. Uh, depending on the installation and where they are, uh, they can range anywhere from uh, 40 amp charging speed. Actually, I think it can go as low as like 30, 30 amps, I think is the lowest you can set them at, all the way up to 80 amps. This one right here behind me is at the Sandrift Resort in Wisconsin Dells, Wisconsin. Uh, free charging for anybody that wants to uh, uh, come on by, which is Midwest's largest tourist spot. This one's actually on a 80, uh, 100 amp circuit, so that means we can charge it up to 80 amps. Full charge for me if I'm flat dead, which uh, ironically charged now it just flashed on my screen. Yes, I cut it close. That's the third time today I've made it to charge now, uh, just to show you how much mileage I, I, I put on today. But uh, full charge is going to take us about uh, three hours, three and a half, about three and a half hours. With the 60 kilowatt battery, about four to four and a half on the uh, 85. Um, yeah, if you are using a, a business's free charger like that, um, it always is nice just to stop in, say hi, thank you, and of course, uh, you're always welcome to make a donation. Those are always welcome. I just thought I'd cover. So final thoughts, oops, unable to drive, check charge port, yes I hit the brake, wow, the car is charging, oops, uh, but just some final thoughts to wrap up uh, this video, um, uh, we already went over uh, charger types, currents, rates, DC fast charging, including Tesla and the Chademo, um, I'm not able to show you the, uh, SAE fast charge which uh, is supposed to be the new standard um, personally 
there are only like three stations, four stations in the entire United States of America at the moment, compared to like I think around I think a little over a hundred Tesla superchargers and about six hundred Chatimos, if I'm remembering the count correct. Uh, just some difficulties and challenges you might face, and I faced myself. Uh, one is finding the stations. Uh, now, if it's a Tesla supercharger, uh, it shows right up on your center council map, but uh, what if you don't have a Tesla, or uh, what if you need a non-supercharger charging location? Uh, that's where some different iPhone or Android apps come in very handy. Uh, namely, PlugShare is probably going to be your absolute best friend. Uh, PlugShare actually even includes charging stations from pretty much any network and uh, any any of the users can actually report a charging location and host charging locations. Um, you can put your home on there, you know, uh, uh, say you found a restaurant letting you plug in a, on a 110 outlet while you're having lunch. Uh, you can put that on there so if someone's an emergent has an emergency and they need to plug in anywhere uh, That would be a You know beneficial. I mean that's saved my butt a few times and I've even found a few places like that And I've actually had people go out of their way to tell me. Thank you. You just saved me from having an expensive tow uh, Some other challenges are poorly installed stations. Um, I ran into that uh, ironically, in Niagara Falls, uh, of all places, um, one of the at the um, it's one of the U.S. side at one of the parks. Uh, of course, the name escapes me. Um, it was parking lot before Goat Island, and um, we were running on per the proverbial fumes, getting to our Niagara Falls uh, hotel. And uh, we stopped there and plugged in and um, we got an error message charge speed reduced check for extension cord used or bad wiring well obviously no extension cord that yeah, was a J1772 um, it was 208 volts at 30 amps however the voltage drop was so bad because I used undersized wiring to go from wherever their meter or breaker panel was to the station um, uh, it started out at 208 volts at 30 amps to drop down to 190. Um, you really shouldn't go below, won't, shouldn't drop below 200 at 30 amps. Um, they really used too, too thin of a gauge wire for the length of uh, the electrical run they had, which was under quite a long parking lot. Um, not only did it reduce once, it reduced twice. So uh, with the Tesla, it released whenever. Uh, it detects some sort of fault or high resistance in the wiring. It will reduce your charge speed to help eliminate the problem. First, it'll reduce it by 25%, and then it will reduce it by 50, uh, 50%, then 75%, and then at that point, it stops charging altogether due to safety reasons and trying to prevent fires, so on and so forth. So, um, it actually reduced twice, so it knocked us down to 16 amps. That was painfully slow. Uh, 16 amps at 240 volt or 208 volts. Um, it took quite a while, at least, but we were able to get enough just to get to our destination, which was pretty much immediately over the uh, the bridge onto the Canadian side where we were staying the night. Uh, just just as an example. Uh, other challenges, temperature, cold, uh, if you're going to be waiting in your vehicle and the temperature is below freezing and uh, don't plan on running your heat um, while you're sitting in the car, at least not the whole time. Maybe turn it on for a few minutes just to get the chill out and shut it off. Most public, unless you're on a supercharger. If you're on a supercharger, it doesn't matter one bit. That sucker's got so much power. Uh, you'll, you'll never be able to slow down your charging speed. But the problem is, especially if you're on a 30 amp station, public station, the heat of the car in the car can draw more power than what the station can provide back into the car. Or, you know, it can even even out a bit. So, uh, say you're at a 30 amp 208 volt station, 
uh, like the charge point I showed you at the AAA service center. Uh, that's the one with the little RFID tag I showed you. If I were to turn on the car's heater while sitting and plugged in at that station, it's going to be a washout. I won't gain anything. That might gain maybe a couple miles per hour. That's it. Compared to 18 to 30. Depending. Um, but I really won't lose anything in that case at that station. But you're just going to be sitting there pretty much using all the power that you're getting from the station just to heat the car. This is where your seat heaters come in very, very handy. Um, now if you are stuck in that situation and it is extremely cold out, uh, make sure you have whatever kind of range mode on your car turned on to reduce the heater power. Recirculate, even if it fogs your windows, recirculate uh, the inside air to keep as much heat in as possible. And then try and run it for maybe five minutes and then keep it shut off for 15 minutes or so. Of course, if there's a business or something nearby, even a McDonald's, Walmart, anything, you're better off just plugging in, getting out, and going and walking around inside a store or having a cup of coffee to keep warm uh, than trying to use your car heat to, to do the job for you. Um, that's that's a big challenge here in Wisconsin, north, north, northwest, midwest here. Uh, I know you Canadians will know exactly what I'm talking about. Um... Other difficulties can be uh, you arrive at a station just to find that it's offline or vandalized. Uh, always try and have a backup plan, which it's not always going to work out like that. But um, I've had my Model S now for a year and a half. Uh, when I first got it, there were very, very, very few charging stations around Wisconsin. Uh, of course, every area is a little different. But now, just within the last year, it's, I mean, a year and a half later, um, Milwaukee County went from having three three stations, three public stations, to uh, about 15, 20, and probably another 15 or 20 private residences that uh, will I'll let you charge up if you're if you're in a, having an emergency. Um, Plug Share app is your friend. Another app to have is. Uh, uh, charge point like the uh, charge point station that I I showed you with the RFID tag um, at least the nice thing about the charge point app it won't show you everything out there it'll only show you what's on the charge point network and I believe it'll also show you locations of Nissan dealerships now for any charge point produced station it will also tell you if it's occupied or not and in most cases, if it's online or not, can't pass that up. Um, at the moment, that's all that's coming to mind. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, please don't hesitate to leave them in the comments box below. If you have questions, do the same. I try to answer as much and as as accurately and as often as possible, um, if possible. Also hit the subscribe button um, actually it could be over here Let's see. Look at the camera screen is reversed anyways subscribe um, and uh, if possible like the video uh, every sub subscription and like that I get actually helps boost my rankings which also helps me produce more videos and fulfill more requests. This was also, as usual, a viewer request for this video. And um, have a good evening and happy holidays.